I went crazy. He goes, a few people have gone, so I need you to make up, but you're all, you should be well drunk at this stage. So I'm thinking, at this stage, you should be up for a bit of cheering and a bit of clapping and a hooping and hollering. So guys, give all the love in the world to the fantastic Chairman Carter! Oh. Oh. How you doing? You alright? Uh, well, I'll just start by saying that I'm, uh, I'm not a very interesting person. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I reel you in. The most interesting thing about me is uh, that I was born in England and I, uh, I moved to Ireland when I was about 11. Which, as you can imagine, was a pretty traumatic experience. I moved to the depths of the Midlands, which, as you can imagine, was an even more traumatic experience. And the people down there, they're not the most sophisticated. I remember on one of my first days, I tried to started a conversation on literature. Turned out they thought Hamlet was when you put ham in an omelette. <laughs> and that even that is a rare and foreign delicacy enjoyed only by foreigners, Protestants, and possibly homosexuals. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... The one thing I noticed immediately, though, was that the Irish people, you know, they love a laugh. They love the banter, you know, they love to have a bit of crack. So I was coming over from England, you know, and someone would just sidle up to me, like, and he'd just make a witty remark, like, I fucking hate you, you British cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe, you know, fuck off home, <laughs> you British cunt. <laughs> or quite often they just say, you black and tan. <laughs> and at first that one was really lost on me because coming over from England, I was only 11, I didn't quite understand it. My first reaction when they just shout at me on the street, you black and tan, was, it was one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been black or tanned, okay? My second reaction was just simply, you know, I said, I'll let this one slide, so I just go, well, thank you very much. It's totally natural. Family, friends, have a holiday home in Cyprus. And then that didn't go down too well with them. But anyway, I realised that, uh, you know, it was going to be pretty tough. Um, so I felt that I had to adapt to survive. So I started trying to mimic a lot of what I perceive to be Irish characteristics. Uh, the first and most obvious one was just the gratuitous and arbitrary swearing. Because English people use swearing when they're angry. But Irish people use it as a form of punctuation. <laughs> I'm just fucking going to that fucking... <laughs> fucking shop. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I tried that for a bit, but, you know, it doesn't quite become an 11-year-old. <laughs> I remember when my sister had her first child, and she wheeled her out, she says, Dear me, what do you think? I said, God, he's a fucking cute little cunt. <laughs> Isn't he, Mammy? <laughs> so, the second thing uh, that I tried to emulate was just, uh, what, I, what I mean, I, I love it, but Irish people, they can really uh, wonderfully just show no enthusiasm and no positivity. So I tried that for a little bit, because I remember when I went to my auntie's house, and uh, her daughter had been doing very well in her uh, career. And I said, uh, auntie, God, you must be... It's great, isn't it? Susan, she's been nominated for a Nobel Prize. She goes, oh, well, sure. <laughs> you must be very proud. I suppose I am, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she could save thousands of lives. She, she might cure malaria. But she never stops fucking talking about it. Either. <laughs> so, 
I tried that for a bit, but it, it really wears you down just being, you know, showing no enthusiasm, the enthusiasm and being negative a lot. So I decided I better try and copy something else. So I um, I decided I'd go for the for the religious thing because it was late nineties, you know, before the church had somewhat discredited itself, and um, I, yeah, I decided that I, I you know I'd become more religious. But I made a big mistake. I confused going to Mass every week, kneeling by the altar, you know, slurping on the literal blood of Christ, and chowing down on his flesh. I confused that with some kind of notion of spirituality. So... <laughs> So I went, uh, I went to Mass, and I'd be sitting there, all the old lads in the back, you know, I'd pile in, and kind of lean in, give them a nudge, you know, a bit of a wink. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd do the whole thing. I mean, it's like a 30-minute dance routine, you know, all this. <laughs> and I left, uh, I, left the, I left the church, and I thought it was good, you know, half an hour well spent. Um... <laughs> And I turned, uh, turned to my uncle, who I'd, uh, who I'd gone with, as we were walking out, and in my naive and, you know, English way, I turned around to him. Uh, bearing in mind now, this was a guy that only five minutes before had been beating his breast and beseeching the Lamb of God to have mercy on us <laughs> and to forgive us our sins. You know, he was really giving it sucks. <laughs> I turned to him and I said, uh... Uncle Tom, that was a really interesting sermon, wasn't it? And he just, just, just turned, are you gay or something? Will you fuck off back to Chicago? <laughs> so I decided I'd just leave that one as well. But to be honest, you know, the whole religion thing, it did leave me thinking, you know. I was, I was missing something. Um, so I decided I'd try and take something else on. And uh, became, you know, a bit of a goth for a bit. But when I saw the goth, you see the goths on TV, you know. And they're hanging out in Starbucks. And they're like, they're hanging out in the mall or whatever. Where I lived, there was a spar and a creamery. <laughs> Try being disillusioned and jaded in a fucking cream room. <laughs> Surrounded by briquettes, WD 40, and 2 by 4 planks. <laughs> but I did, I, I got really low, I got pretty low, and at one point I said, oh, I'm gonna do myself in. It's too hard being English in a world where. The English aren't accepted anymore. We just run it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean we then. No. They, those people. Anyway, um, so I decided I'd, uh, I'd finish myself off and uh, I took an overdose of tablets. But it was in the mid noughties and it was during the little Aldi craze, you know, when, uh, you know, when um, people would be coming back from their shopping with fucking tennis ball cleaner and a wetsuit or whatever. <laughs> so the, the bottle of tablets was in German, so I couldn't read the label. Turned out I took fucking vitamin C tablets. I woke up the next morning feeling better and fresher than ever. And then to add insult to injury, the doctor comes over, looks at me, looks at the bottle of pills and he goes, vitamin C, huh? Bearing in mind, I just made a suicide attempt. Looks like vitamin C, huh? Pretty appropriate for an orange bastard like yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.